Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Um, as it says, I'm doing a two-part mask mold. This is my simple sculpture right here. And voila, it'll be a zombie-ish, grave digger-ish type thing. And I'm going to, I'm doing a two-piece mold. That's why I wanted to make sure I went live. Because I don't do those a lot anymore. Most I do one-piece molds. And uh, I get the most questions about two-piece mask molds. I see something on the sculpture that I don't like. These uh, four headlines are a little heavy. I'm just hitting them a little bit. It's a little bit like tool marks, and I don't like that. Okay, so two-piece mold. Uh, my battle plan is to make the clay wall and mold the back half of this head first. If I mold the back half first, then uh, I can lay it down and then mold the front of the head. So of course I didn't prep everything that I needed before I started. Because that's just how I roll. Getting down some clay here so that I can make some clay walls. Uh, most of my sculpting tools are actually not in this room with me. They're uh, in my storage building for the booth. Do you need them? Um, no, I don't think so. What I do need to do is put the TV on the same as the computer. Is that it? Hooray! Look at that. Sweet. And now, you all are reading my Facebook messages. All 5,000. Let's see. I'm pulling this up so I can see comments easier. Me on a delay. Weird. Um, yeah, so again, my battle plan on this two piece mass mold is I'm going to do a uh, mold wall right along here. I'll probably go around the ear just for uh, kicks and giggles. Down here, around the ear. So my first step is cutting up some clay in order to use a clay mold. And again, I don't have all my sculpting tools. So I'm just cutting a piece of string. And I'm going to cut slabs of this. Now you should be able to see that process better, aside from my ham hot of a back blocking your view. Oh, 
we'll get this figured out eventually. Or I won't. That's fine. Too. I was going to try and make those a little bigger, but. So yeah, just a piece of string, no handles, nothing fancy. You don't need anything fancy. And I'm, I'm shooting for roughly half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. If I go a little thinner than that, that's okay. If I go a little thicker than that, that's okay. There are no mold wall police. The only thing you really have to worry about with the mold wall is uh, that it does its job. The mold wall is a barrier. We are making a barrier between uh, the front half and the back half of the sculpture. And I will apply plaster to the back half here. This first slab a little bit rough because it was that's all the marks from the bag now this side's pretty good you only need one side to be smooth but still i think i'm just going to use this down here on the bottom because i have a bit of my plaster base exposed and i'm just going to push this right up to that plaster base Not to the plaster base. I'm pushing it right up to the sculpture because I uh, I don't want plaster to come in contact with plaster. You never want that, especially if you're not like controlling that situation hardcore. And I'm going to do a cheat that I normally do on two-piece mask molds. And it just makes my life easier down the road. And that cheat is I know I'm gonna split the mask. So where I split the mask, right in the middle of the back, I put a pork spout. This pore spell I'm putting in will be negative. All right. So I'm putting it right here on the back of the mask. I trim this out anyway so it fits well. This, now it will fit well and it's easier to pour. And I bet Rob will appreciate that down the road. I will. Now I gained it makes my life easy. All right. So let me move you. Come on a little bit closer now. Those are words, right? I jiggled you and you stopped. But I fixed it. Ezekiel says, hey, Rob. Hey, you. Saw you at Trans World, bought some spider medallions and such off of you. Great to see you again. It's great to see you again. So, mostly in this shot, you will see the mask and my belly. One of these took years to make. The other, I sculpted this weekend. All right, so now, see how I covered the bottom of the bust? It was exposed, but now it's not. Something by you here? And I just used my block of clay, and again, somewhere between a half inch 
to three quarters of an inch thick. That's probably a full inch. Who cares? Wide. I want it to be nice and wide. I have a bamboo skewer, and what I, I'll show you what I'm doing when I do the other ear, but I'm basically lining it up a little further than that, and then I am marking it with the skewer, so this cut is exactly the slope the neck, the bottom of the ear, and I'm starting my way around. And if you have to cut it off a little bit, cut it just a hair short or shy so that you can then just squeeze the clay and boom, it goes right into position. Now, granted, I'm doing the other side of you guys, so you're not getting a lot out of that. I'm aware. That's okay, I'll come around. Yeah, I'll be doing the other side here shortly. And I'll take my thumb and push the back side of the clay wall just against the sculpture. Another piece of clay. I'm doing the same thing a little higher up the ear. I'm marrying those two pieces of clay together. And this is the, this process, I'm making a mold wall. That's all that I'm doing. The more weight you have out there in space, the less likely your mold wall, the less your mold wall will want to hang out and stay where it's supposed to be. So I trim that. I want this wall to be at a 90 degree angle to the sculpture. I'm about to come over the top of the head because I'm about to do that. I'm actually going to cut this piece. Probably a better angle for you guys right now. The sculpt is not coated in Krylon. I don't do that anymore. My sculpt is now coated in Pledge Furniture Polish because that works better in my opinion. Uh, it's a much better release agent for the clay, from the clay to the sculpture. No, the plaster to the sculpture, it just releases them better. So that's what I use now. And I cut several pieces. And now you'll start to get an idea. I'm just going to cut this one off, let's say here. Yes, the molding casting process is the same. The only thing that would change is that once you have it molded and once you have latex in there, then you would put 
foam into the, uh, the mold. See how I'm resting this little stick on the sculpture? And that is marking my clay. And that gives me my fairly exact angle that it needs to be at. I care about everything over that line, not necessarily what is under the line. So I remove that. Now I can lay that here, and I have a pretty good fit on my sculpture. These two just blend together. Boy, it's been a while since I've done a two-piece mold. But the last 40 ones I've made have been uh, one piece. Most of the time, you can get away with the one piece, but I want to do hair and stuff all on this, and I don't want to put it on a helmet like I've been doing lately. And since my clay comes off square, I don't have to cut that if I just make that square. Cut a few more. You get the clay from a ceramic supply store, okay? The ceramic supply store is where they make pottery, or where they sell the things to make pottery. That is where you will get your clay. Yeah, Mr. Pl uh, Pledge Furniture Polish works really good. Is it a Christmas theme tonight? Rob, did I do something Christmassy? Yes, I have made latex chess pieces for costumes. Um, it's actually not hard to do because most of the time you can do them as a flat sculpture and just mold them flat, like sculpt it on your table flat and uh, mold the heck out of it. Jake, the only difference between the clay I'm sculpting with and the clay that I'm building the wall with is color. It's it's both water. They're both water-based clay, and uh, yeah, it's just water-based clay. Why are they different colors? Because this is a very much a natural product. It just comes out of the ground. And depending upon where you pull it out of the ground is uh, how it looks. Georgia clay might be a little more red in color, you know? We have a lot of red clay in Texas. So what I am concerned about, what are my concerns that I haven't mentioned yet? Those are that uh, I have to build this mold halfway around the neck. If the mold is too far uh, on one side of the neck, meaning it wraps all the way around, then the mold is going to bite and it won't come off. So it has to be exactly halfway around so it can do this. This this piece won't come off because this is, you know, solid plaster in there. Now, you can fight that by having your sculpt be big or putting your mold wall at the exact perfect spot. I do not have a ton of clay on this sculpture. Um, I sculpted this as a live demo at a show I was recently at. And a young man by the name of Trey, who is 12 years old, really helped me. He did a lot of this sculpture. You know, I, I had the bones down, kind of. And um, I actually kept a lot of what he did. 
He was 12 years old. And uh, he did not make any mistakes so terrible that I had to go over his work. Um, you know, some tweaking, some proportion. But for the most part, he did a cracking job. But that means I don't know how thick this clay is because I didn't do it. And now you guys should be able to see this process pretty well. That's right, Michael. I have done the tree. I did the tree creature. And uh, that was a flat sculpt like that. Yeah, that was a chest, chest piece, and it was wrapped around. Pretty easy. If you're incorporating into costuming, like I've got a werewolf to do coming up. Then uh, it's actually pretty easy to get that right. See, now this piece fits right here pretty well. A little bit of maneuvering because, you know, the ear's a little curved right there. And I'm building this wall for this side. If I were building the wall for the other side, I'd make sure that side was flat. I'm a little thin right here, so I'm just adding a little block for support. If I thought I was going to be pushing really hard on this sucker, then I would uh, do some little buttresses out of clay, too. Don't think that'll be happening. And all this is hair. So honestly, if I have some air bubbles along this scene, I don't care. It's covered up. But you still want to be in the practice of making a good mold. Uh, you know, in this sculpture, the ears are covered. You don't see the ears. He's got hair. You don't, you don't see the ears. But if I don't put the ears in it, then I can never have ears in it. I always have to do that one thing. If I sculpt it with ears in there, it becomes more versatile. And maybe I could do different things with it. And you're limiting what your, you know, you're limiting what your customer can, customer can do. If you're working for film, you're limiting what your director can do. If you don't paint the back of the head because no one's going to see the back of the head, well, then you your director can't do an over-the-shoulder shot. That would be perfect that they just thought of, but they can't do it because you didn't paint the back of the head. So, similarly, 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 in a similar fashion, you, uh, I'm a little out of it tonight, guys. I apologize. Um, in a similar fashion, go ahead and sculpt the ears. Maybe the, maybe the actor playing this wants to add an earring, you know, to signify something about the character. Well, you're limiting them if you don't have an ear for them to put it in, right? Yeah, that's right, Alan. Thanks, everybody, it's for so agreeing. And now I just cut the wall to exactly how thick I want the mold to be. I don't want to mold all the way out to here. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight, as Rob says. And I got to go in a little bit here. I'm going to make this mold wall be a 90 degree to the sculpture. Doing a bit of a pat right now, making sure it's pressed nice and in. Let me get a special tool for making that 90 degrees. 
You'll all be shocked to know that my special tool is a tongue depressor. I cut it at 90 degrees. So now I can run this along the sculpture and clean up. And little things like this, this is why you want your sculpture to be leather hard. If it were as soft as the clay that I'm making the mold wall out of, well, then I'd be removing a little bit of both of them. But since the sculpture is a good deal firmer, I can clean up this wall without having to worry about uh, really marking up my sculpture too bad. I don't know how long it took me to do this mold wall. How long do mold walls take? They take as long as they take. So far you've done about 30 minutes. You have to get them right. This is the crux of the sculpture. I mean, this is the crux of the mold. If I don't do this right, then the mold will not turn out right. Okay. And I want to put a couple keys in this so that when this becomes plaster, uh, I'll be able to, you know, key it. Let me grab a special key making tool. Hey, say this, Rob. Could you mix me up some plaster? Plaster coming. I'm just making keys now. That's it. Fine, right? What? This rubber cement. Oh, yeah. I went out to let it, let it get tacky. Okay. Any hot tips for sculpting? I've done none since high school. Start. That is my best tip for sculpting. Start sculpting. Then you get better at it. Use visual reference. Uh, okay, I talked about that. Oh, green and red clothes. Yes. Well, um, this is my summer Halloween shirt because it's a watermelon jack o lantern. <laughs> and then uh, these red shorts are very comfy around the house shorts. I have not felt 100% today. I am feeling better. Let's just say that things are happening for my health. And uh, so, yeah, so I feel better than I did today. Now, mold keys. Uh, you can use a spoon. I'm putting it in here, and I'm kind of spinning it to kind of drill a divot into there. I'm using a wire loop tool. I'm making pretty shallow, pretty subtle keys. Um, that's all I need. And I'm doing several of them. I'll probably do seven or eight all the way around. I used to do a big gutter key, meaning I would just scoop clay out all the way around. Yeah, but they snap off. They almost always snap off in the other side of the mold. So they're kind of pointless. The keys are just to help you line it up. And I am putting my tool in. I'm an early adult. I'm putting my tool in in the same direction that I want the mold to pull away. So if I do one key this direction, you know, off to the side, and I do this key off to the other side, then that's not going to want to pull out because I've made it, I've, I've made locks. So do them in the direction. See, my tool is very straight. So I want that mold to pull off this way. And I don't have a lot of curves in my mold. A couple curves and waves in your mold. It's not the end, in your mold wall. It's not the end of the world. It actually kind of works as a natural lock, helping hold it together. But too many, and you can make a mold lock, which you do not want to do. Who likes mold locks? No one.
couple of notes. My clay down here does slope away. It slopes away from the sculpture so that when my when my mold is made and it's upside down and negative, I can pour all the way up to my neck and still have some room. You know, that way everything that I sculpted is going to be molded. And I see a little area here under the ear. That's, it's just a bit too deep. It's not terrible. What's too deep? I don't want it that deep because that's going to be a Audi on the mold wall, and those are easy to break. You know, if you lay the mold down on its uh, half, then that little Audi bit could break off. Who wants that? We're almost there. Now, the clay on the mold wall gets no release. Okay? This gets no release. I don't have to put any release on this mold wall. The only thing I put on the sculpture was a couple coats of pledge. This extra little mold wall clay, I'm going to put down here as a bit of a dam. And, and this isn't necessary, but I'm making just a little bit of a dam to catch some excess plaster so that if plaster pools down there, it'll be very easy for me to use that and paint plaster back on from what has spilled down. Rob is mixing my plaster up right now. I have a lot of videos on mixing plaster, so I'm not going to bother breaking away and showing that. You add plaster to water, never water to plaster, and you uh, just add it in, sift it in evenly throughout the surface of the water, and it'll, it'll come up. Uh, it'll sink, it'll sink, it'll sink, and then it starts floating as the water gets saturated. And when it makes little dry islands and kind of looks like a dry riverbed on top, that's when you have enough plaster in there. That is how you know. Where do you want? Uh, would you put this over there on that bag and then just put the plaster right up there? And now that Rob has sifted all the plaster in, it's going to stand for a minute. I'm going to mix it up with my hands. Wear gloves. Once I wear gloves, I'll put some gloves on. Okay. Then I'll mix it up with my hands. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna, I want to let the water and the plaster get to know each other. You know, right now they're making friends. And what's actually happening is the water is seeping in. And when I go to mix it here in a minute or so, I won't have any lumps because the water has infiltrated. If I mix it right now, all I'm going to be doing is breaking up lumps. So why not let the water do that? It also makes for a stronger plaster because you don't have any dry pockets. Plaster is stronger when you mechanically mix, but it's really not that big of a deal for what I'm doing. Halloween Santa. I kind of like that idea. Ah, well, very cool, Dead End Haunt. Very cool. It's good to meet you at the show. Ugh. All right, I'm grabbing some brushes. I'm grabbing some gloves. I have not abandoned you. I am not doing the abandoning. I am very much here. I'm very much, I'm still making the mold. But I want to grab a brush. I want to throw some gloves on. Guys, I really appreciate that you uh, enjoy my channel. It is nice, nice to uh, hang out here with you. All right. Double checking my mold wall before I commit it to plaster. It's pretty good. It's fairly smooth. Not a lot of tool marks in it. I have one little weird area over here. I think I can clean that up right now, though. It's actually beyond the point of the sculpture, so it's not a big deal. But I just want the mold wall to look fairly nice. 
and not have any spots where it's going to uh, lock up. This half should not really lock up. But you never know. So down here in that corner, in case that corner kicks out a little bit, put a little clay right there to make sure it's level with the wall. It's time. Brush is ready. I'm going to move you guys a little bit. Size so of pass through, bro. And the Alton Brown of Haunt DIY. I'll take that. Um, I am a little sick, Tommy. I'm actually, it's, it's not sick, but I'm, I'm not well. I want to elaborate with what's going on. It's, uh, it's not life threatening. I'm just not feeling well. So. If you notice me sighing a little more than normal or moving a little slower, you are very perceptive. Now I have a nice, smooth plaster with no lumps, even though, well, because I didn't jump in here and uh, mix that right away. Bring the plaster around to the same side. I'm not in a rush. I've probably got 20 minutes from this point, maybe 18. What is most important to me right now? I'm hitting the seam between the mold and the sculpture, the mold wall and the sculpture. I'm hitting that seam. That's the most important thing that I'm worried about right now. I know that down here in this joint is a plaster bust. So I'm not jamming it down in there to make sure it makes contact. I don't want to make contact. Sometimes you let air bubbles do a little bit of that work for you. There's going to be a cushion of air in that little crack down here that won't let plaster touch plaster. Understanding your mold dynamics and where will plaster go when it's this thick is it's imperative to making good molds. That's why I always say it. You want to start making, let's say, silicone masks. I don't care. Start with a latex half mask. Move on to a two-part latex mask. Make five of those. Then start working with epoxy and silicone. Because the cost on these materials is so much less. See how now I'm going around and I'm filling in those mold keys? And I'm making sure that they're full of plaster. I want them to be little half marbles. So I'm doing what's important. I'm doing these keys right now. Giving them a little jab to make sure that they're full of plaster and they're going to give me a good impression. On the sculpt itself, I am not... Um, I'm not really smearing this around. I'm loading the brush and I'm dabbing it on. By loading and dabbing, I'm slapping any air out. If you just roll the brush over it, then it would be pretty easy for you to, uh, you know, trap air down in a crevice. Why am I starting with the back of the head? I'm starting with the back of the head because it has less detail on it. The back of the head almost always has less detail. Therefore, it is an easy choice to mold the back of the head first because then I can lay it down on this back of its mold and allow gravity to do the work of pulling the plaster into the detail. This is Ultra Cal 30, I believe. Uh, it's a little gray for hydrocal. That's how I know what it is. And I'm slowly switching over from hydrocal back to ultracal. I have trouble with consistent water temperature. And hydrocal, unless you use warm enough water, will give you little spider cracks in your mold, no matter what you do. So, 
Well, Garth, the good thing about this is it's going to go up on YouTube, and you'll be able to watch it whenever you want. Next time you're in the bathroom for an extended duration, just pop on my video. It warms my heart knowing that uh, a lot of people watch me on the toilet. Helps move things along. You know, other people have mentioned to me, Rob, that they like to watch my videos and then go to sleep. And I'm not sure how to take that. Just consider that you're providing a public service of the ASMR. Apparently, my voice is soothing. And I just, <laughs> well, I don't yell at them like I yell at you, Rob. Oh, okay. Rob has PTSD from my voice. <laughs> Rob has a gut reaction. He hears me talking, spits out a cigarette, picks up a hammer. Looking busy. And you can see that just by picking it up on the brush and then letting it off, it's building up a nice thickness already. I'm going to be at a quarter of an inch thick just from, you know, painting this on. I do want to go up under these ears and make sure that back behind these ears really has a good amount of plaster. And be careful to not trap air bubbles. Why is this mold wall and at a nice 90? So I can scrape plaster off of the brush and build up the thickness of that mold wall. Hello, window licker. Alan and a friend. That friend is Rob. Rob, how long have you been helping in the shop now? A year and a couple months? Year and eight, uh, one year and eight months. One year and eight months. And I haven't killed him yet, and he hasn't rage quit. Have you rage quit? I don't think so. I'm still here. Yeah. And the, right now, Rob is working on uh, apocalypse masks. I don't have a ton of secrets. But I don't necessarily want to show too much more of how I make Apocalypse masks because I'd like to get two years out of them as a, as a product line before so many other people are making them. I don't have to bother. I do know that others, you know, pick up things and that's perfectly fine. I don't get mad at them. Heck, I've taught them how to do it to be honest, sometimes. Or I might have inspired them and given them the idea. That's okay. Now, my plaster isn't thick enough to go over this overhang of the back of the hand and stay, really. So I'm building up from the bottom. I'm giving it a nice layer so I can build up. On the top of it, I really... Uh, you know, I built it and let it flow down. And now that's different. It is getting thicker. Just going to scrape the bottom of the bucket to make sure that I have all the plasters active. You know, you want to move this around a little bit. Keep your plaster active. So I want it to be able to flow when I get it onto the, uh, the mold area here. Putting a blop in, reminding it it's a liquid by quivering it with my fingers. And that makes it flow as much as I want to into those crevasses. Remember I said I was going to build up a little well here? Well, I have. Not quite at this stage yet. Like, use the mold wall to scrape it off of my hand. Really build up a good thickness. Can you start making some more? No, no. Ultracal kind of likes a break in between layers. Hydrocal wants you to do the mold all at once. I'm just putting it on the back of my fingers. Running it over.
And again, I don't want to smear because if I smear, I'm just going to move plaster off of what already is covered well. Got a little popsicle stick. I don't want to build up a ledge on this clay. So I'm making sure this clay stays clean. Ish. Now, Rob has already prepared some water over here for the next batch of plaster. I'm going to use it to clean off my brush before the brush dies. That's going to do two things. One, it'll save my brush. And number two, it's going to introduce some plaster into this water, meaning my next batch of plaster is going to kick even faster. Because you know, it's kind of like a starter for, for bread dough. Does that make sense? If you bake, I guess it does. Okay, my plaster is good and thick now. I'm making sure as I run it up the back of the head that it goes in this corner and doesn't trap air. Don't want to trap air. I see a little cave of air. I pop it. Get a big lot in my hand right now. I'm leaving a gap between the mask sculpture and my open hand. And the plaster runs out of that gap. And my hand away from the sculpture controls how thick that plaster is. I am nearing the point where I am not going to have plaster left. So, Rob, now is probably a good time to start mixing. All right, let me get but you can, you can take a minute. Let me get this final vent attached. I know that you're doing your own things. This side I built up okay. I have not built up this side of that wall. I just want to. And I'm trying to keep the plaster off of this wall, top wall, too. Because all that carryover, it's just going to become a pain later. It's not a deal breaker. It's not a problem. But it's a pain. Uh, one of the main problems that I see with uh, other people's molds is that their mold comes out to a knife edge and it, it swoops out and it's very sharp. I don't want that. I want this to be blunted off. I want a nice thick edge on this. That's where my strength is, you know. And also, that'll keep it from cutting you when you're moving it around. You know, that real sharp swoop out to the edge, that's why I'm pulling plaster off my hand to make sure it's thicker. Rob already has that second bucket working. And I'm looking for spots that are thin. So I can just add a little plaster in. It's got, it's got a good silly putty quality to the plaster right now. And I am working on, I'm just smoothing this a little bit. So that next layer goes on no problem. Sometimes I might want to put some ridges in this to make sure that the next layer of plaster has a mechanical bond and they're going to grab together. But I don't, I'm not going for that right now. Right now I'm just going for smooth because smooth, I'm less likely to trap air. You know, those steep ridges, that's a place where an air pocket can hide. And I'm still, you know, within 
quarter inch of the sculpture in a lot of these areas, a quarter to a half of an inch. So I'm still worried about air bubbles. Those are still a concern for me. When I get to the outside of the mold, I'm not as worried about air bubbles. But right now, I am. So I'm smoothing so that next batch can go on. And now I'm cleaning. Clean this tool off here. And do a little bit of scraping on this wall. And I'm not getting any clay in there, so that's fine. Put that right back on the sculpture. I'm looking. If I have clay in that mess of plaster I just cleaned up, then I'm not using it. If I don't have any, then yeah, I'll use that little piece. Why not? Okay. So we're getting squared away here. We'll do a little bit of more cleaning, which is just me getting plaster off of my sweet work surface, which right now is a cardboard box. That some foam mats are in, and I'm going to throw this away. I'm going to tinkle. Rob is going to tell you a story from our haunt being open this weekend. Ah, a story. Well, I was uh, in Annabelle's. Well, this weekend was the Texas Honors Convention. So during the day, we were uh, running the Still Beast Studios booth. I was in stilts in a costume. Did that for a couple hours. Then I went to Dark Hour and got the show ready. And then I was in Annabelle's. I was one of the actor managers in Annabelle's this weekend. And Annabelle's is our insane asylum. Uh, it's lovely. I like it a lot. It's The theme is a haunted asylum, so ghost activity everywhere. And uh, we were just having a blast. We had a camera crew come through. Uh, I think it was Fear Worm. They were uh, doing uh, some promo work. And they came through and had a friend of the haunt. And uh, I'm not going to say her name, just to protect her. Uh, but uh, we scared her so bad, she uh, she went, she tinkled in her pants. <laughs> and we had that on camera. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's so funny, but I do. She's been there. She dates a guy that used to work there. We still scared her so bad she made a tinkle. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> She's never gonna hear the end of it either. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Good time. I'm actually using UltraCal right now. Normally I use HydroCal, but right now I'm using UltraCal. Your time is 30 minutes. It is called Ultra Cal 30 because of a 30 minute cure time. That's awesome. And this weekend we had somebody that normally does not like to be scared. So happy with the show we we're doing. She came through three times. It's a good weekend. We had a good time. A lot of honors came through. Everybody had a good time. And if they didn't, they didn't talk to me about it. We're getting close to event horizon over here. That's fine. I'm taking the chance to eat a fajita. Shannon made a chicken fajitas for the shop tonight. We are blessed to have her cooking. I don't know if I'm or something good. That's good. You need your energy. Sure. Uh, 
Good night, all. Thanks, Alan, back across. When the liquor said good night, Howling Life said good night. Uh, when the liquor said, hey, big dog. Hey, Dozer. Hey, I didn't pay good money to hear Rob Ramble. Well, thank you, Warmonger. <laughs> Considering this was free, you got what you paid for. Oops, sorry, never listened to me. Uh, Howling Life or Master Masks. It's good. You know, it's a good scare when they pee, lol. Felt, felt, field walker masks. Hello from Scotland. Window liquor. Hello from the US, Scotland. Ezekiel. Hello from down under, Scotland. Big dog. I like it when the kids climb up their parents and, they, and the teenagers. Window liquor. Damn people from all over the world. Watch Alan. Tells you a lot about our uh, television options, doesn't it? Huh, we uh, discovered a wasp. Okay. Yes, people from all over the world watch it, Alan, that's for sure. Well, that's, that's, that's pretty good. There's no heat coming off of that. Not yet. I'll go a little slower. Big dogs in the Midwest. Thank you, Ezekiel. I like you too. <clears throat> okay. Took the opportunity to uh, go ahead and eat a little something. Uh, Ed Edmonds prefers U.S. gypsum because it scans faster. Um, when you dwell the mask, meaning when you put uh, when you pour latex into the mold, at that point, it uh, however long it's in there determines how thick that skin gets. U.S. Uh, number one pottery plaster is the fastest skinning, so if you are running commercial mask making, then you might want that. Remember, Ed Edmonds doesn't make one mask at a time. He wants 50. You know, he uh, he's selling to Morris Costumes. And, um, I have a much smaller production. Ultra Cal is probably the strongest of them. You know, Ultra Cal is probably the strongest of them. And this plaster actually wants to be a little thicker than this. So I'm going to go ahead and put a coating, another coating of pledge on the face. I have plenty of time. While I'm waiting for that plaster to thicken. And I'm not really worried about time either because as long as I get to that plaster while it's workable, I have very little to do, in all honesty. Um, I just need to build up the thickness of it. Uh, I like HydroCal because you can pour it all up in one batch. Um, UltraCal wants to be done in three layers. That's fine. Normally, I kind of do it in two. And you're not really punished by doing that or for doing that. It's pretty forgiving. Hydrocal is not as forgiving. Gets these little spider cracks in it from water temperature and uh, building up a little too much heat. Yeah, U.S. gypsum pottery plaster number one is fine. It, it's fine. It's not as strong. You're going to get... After eight or so pulls, you'll start seeing a little bit of detail loss, a little bit of erosion on the mold. So, yes. At Dark Hour Haunted House, like always, like the past five years. This is my sixth year, yes. So six years, I guess. Okay, I am gaining some thickness in the plaster, but I'm not quite where I want to be yet, but I am able to just start Putting a little bit on. And I'm introducing this almost dry plaster. It's still green. 
you know, it's not even really producing a lot of heat yet. But I'm able to introduce this to wet plaster again by putting some of this wet on here. And that's just going to, it won't be a big shock when I put completely wet plaster on here in a minute to build up thickness. And even this little bit, it's building up a little bit of thickness. So now that sculpture is protected. So I know by rubbing my hands around it a little bit, I'm not going to uh, mess up that sculpture because it's got a layer of rock over it. But I covered all the important things first. I wanted them to be safe. Is it safe? Is it secret? Is it safe? Wish I had some chocolate chip cookies. We all want chocolate chip cookies. Okay. I want raspberry filled Samson's. Ezekiel, how's your museum endeavor coming? Is that uh, is that in the works still? When do you think a grand opening might be? <laughs> what do I recommend for a new owner of a haunted house? A Boy. small fortune. Um, yeah, the way to make a small fortune in the haunted house business is to start with a large fortune. I would honestly say make sure that this is really what you want to do. And that includes many facets of the business that just are not fun. Um, sometimes here, you guys see me doing, you know, the sexy work, but this isn't called a house business. You know, this is mask making. Um, haunted houses are, it's like you're a wedding planner, a party planner, a plumber, carpenter, janitor, janitor and scenic painter all in one. What you're really doing is you're hosting a big event every night you're open. You have problems financially from not having enough people. You have problems with your cast from not having enough customers because board actors are terrible people. <laughs> um, and then if you do get customers, you have problems based off of you have too many people you know then they're complaining about the weight so you really have to make sure you want to be in this business and make sure that you have the right people in place to do all those jobs and if that person is you maybe look for some help That is my advice to hunters who are just starting. Oh boy, Tim Tams. Mm. Uh, this will be done in probably two layers, simply because it's moving along. Rod made me a good batch of plaster. I might need to do another one for beauty coat just to make it look nice. Um, if I were strictly adhering to what most people do, I'd have burlap in this layer, and I'd be laying on burlap and thickening it up. I don't normally use burlap, because you just don't need to if your mold is constructed nicely and thick, thick enough. I'm doing a pretty thick production mold, so... What websites do I recommend for getting props and prop making supplies? Uh, I don't recommend websites for it because um, you can't see what you're getting. I recommend going to a trade show. Trans World is the biggest. Uh, go to Trans World and see what's out there. Um, and ask people at Trans World, you know, at the bar, talk to, hey, who do you buy you know, pneumatics from? Who do you buy whatever? Find Haunters Talk Network.
Oh, Ezekiel, it'll be great to see you, sir. All right, so now, though, I'm getting pretty thick. Getting pretty thick. And that means I can come in here and start working on some of these edges. This is the mold wall that I'm working on. Just running it off of my hand to build up that edge. And it's still running. See how it's running down the side? It's a little thin for this. Babysit it. Just a little more time, kind of waiting. I may need one more coat, one more uh, bucket of plaster. I've got a bucket ready. You want to start mixing? Probably a little less than that. No, no, we'll let it. We'll let it go. I Yeah, I don't normally put fiberglass mat in plaster um, because it just doesn't break down the way it does with, with resin and it doesn't soak in the same way. So it actually doesn't strengthen it that much. It's a good chance to introduce air bubbles. So, uh, uh, yes, you can use Acryl 60 or even Elmer's glue in your plaster water. It's uh, almost the same as Acryl 60. What's that? Acryl 60 is a adhesion promoter, making sure that your layers bond together. And it, it is called a bonder fortifier. Gotcha. So it fortifies the plaster, making it a little bit stronger. Because along with the crystalline connections of plaster, you also have elastomeric connections of the acrylic bonding. Makes sense. So it makes kind of a plasticky web inside. But it's not, it helps but it helps on a not large enough scale for it to make a huge difference. If you're making big, thin molds, every little bit helps. If I'm making a big, thin mold, then I certainly want um, burlap in there. This, is, this mold is gonna get a lot of strength from its circular shape. It's very rounded, as you can see, and I'm reinforcing that as I put plaster on. I'm making sure that it stays Nice and rounded. I'm doing these nice thick corners. You know, my, my mold doesn't like swoop in. It's going to come out a little bit. I want to make sure that the back of the neck and the back of the head have adequate coverage. Whenever I lay it on the back of the head, I want to know there's a good three quarters of an inch to an inch of plaster back there. Now I have these nice ridges, like this is nice and thick. I got little hollows over here, so I'm fixing that. Your mold can follow your sculpture exactly, or you could build it up, make it nice and round. Give it a flat top so when you pour it, It'll just stand on its head, no problem. Because when you have to support a mold with towels to pour it, or has to be poured inside a five-gallon bucket, that all eats time and energy. And sometimes the bucket will shift to carry your mold off. Yeah, you, you can. You could have problems. <sighs> And I know I'm plenty thick down here, so I'm pulling it up. So that's sliding down just a hair. Right. 
Bob, I think I'm going to be good on this. It looks like a pretty solid code. So two buckets per side. I don't like a big bib on a latex mask like you do on a silicone mask because what that does is it keeps you from turning your head. I'm not making masks for collectors. I don't care. Or, not that I don't care. I mean, let's say that. I'm not say that. Um, I'm making a mask first and a sculpture second. I don't care if it's a great sculpture. I need it to be a great mask. If the sculpture is good and the actor can move, see, and breathe in it, then uh, I am successful. Now this is a nice, uh, this is, move you guys to the side so you can see what I'm talking about. This mold wall, remember it's about two inches off. It doesn't fall away towards the sculpture. It, it slopes, you know, very slowly. A gentle slope. This is just to uh, flatten up the top so that it rests a little bit easier as we're pouring it up. Plaster is probably the cheapest thing that we work with, but you still you don't want to kill a lot of plaster in your bucket. If you have a lot of plaster left over in your bucket and you're making molds, that's money. Turning money into rocks. Not even a very helpful rock. So until you can get that under control, don't switch to making silicone masks. Because then it's a lot of money in a bucket. I'm monitoring, I'm watching, I'm making sure nothing really slopped off here. Got a nice buildup. Back of the head is at least a half inch to a three quarter on it. I'm good with that. Using my hands here to just work on smoothing while I can. Right now it's Play Doh. Easier to smooth it than when it's you know, mostly cured. I have to sand it or something. I want that. A few little chiglies on the back of the head here. Little divots and areas that weren't quite filled in. A little bit of bucket scrapings. Fill them in, smooth them out. Right now, I'm smoothing. I don't want this mold to cut me. I don't want to have sharp corners. Uh, fish guy, I am going to mold um, probably probably tomorrow night, in all honesty. Yeah, I'll mold him tomorrow night. I was supposed to be on an airplane tomorrow, but that did not happen. Several factors. Seems to have a weekend at home. It is rare. In which I get to make some monsters. Still looks like the X one. So you get to sleep in? What's that weird buzz buzz that happens? I don't know. Is that happening to other people? Oh, it's probably me getting messages on my phone. That's what, that's what they're hearing. I know they hear when I get phone calls and I'm live. 
So yeah, see, this is happening. This is pretty solid now. All of it just came off without my glove, you know. <laughs> um, so I knocked it like rain. Oh, well, that's on my glove. That's nothing more. Mm, pushing, I'm scrubbing, I'm activating it. Okay. Get your rest while you can. Season is incoming. That is pretty good. So I think I got on right about 8 o'clock. Alexa, what time is it? Room zero, 6 Perfect. That means half of the mold and the mold wall took me an hour. Plan on your mold wall taking you an hour. I'm fast. And pretty simple sculpture um, as far as there's no horns or big ridges or anything. This guy's going to get a lot of hair and he's going to get a hat. So he, he, uh, he's going to get complicated top of the four sides of his head. Okay. Plaster is very green. Is that a good one? Rob cut his leg. You want some 99% alcohol to put on that? No. No. I, no. Found, I found all the cuts on my hands earlier when I was spraying there. Right. That was good too. I found every single cut. And some of my arms. Definitely, <laughs> I get cut a lot. Okay. So, over the top along this wall. This plaster, of course, went over top of this wall just a little bit. So I'm just hitting it. I'm going to break it right on that edge pretty much. With a little tiny hammer. You can use whatever you want. I have a little tiny hammer, so I'm using a little tiny to dig that clay out. Yes. That's this clay leaves. Because I want the other side of that mold, that wall, we fashioned the way that that wall looked with this clay. Right. Slide me a garbage can over here, please, sir. Exactly how our mold wall looked is how this looks. Uh, yeah, it's got a little crack in it, but that's not a big deal. I'll fix that right before I mold. We are in Texas. It is pretty dry out here. And it's hot. So that does lead to some cracks in your clay. Not a big deal. Not the end of the world. I think it's 103 today. Yeah. A lot of people are like, oh my God, it's so hot. It was 93. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, my Prius doesn't like the heat. No? Because of the battery. It goes yeah. over 97. It's like, okay, you need engine maintenance. No, I don't. Your battery just doesn't like the heat. <laughs> okay, I'm looking. Had a little bit of plaster seepage under the wall in a few areas. It's not that big of a deal.
It's pulling this plaster off. That rain down onto the sculpture. All in all, that's a pretty good mold wall. I don't want any lip hanging over here. Right now, this plaster is still pretty green, so I can use a little razor knife to just make that a nice edge. Nice. Got one. How close do you need more plaster? Uh, mm, two or three minutes. Okay. Time for a cigarette, if that's what you're asking. Well, I want to get all this glue on so it can stiffen up. It's about seven minutes. No. That uh, little ledge that I knocked off, could that make a mold lock? It's possible. But it's pretty much at a 90 degree angle. And I don't think it was going to cause a problem. But it's better safe than so. Once again now, uh, well, Rob did quit, but then Rob started smoking again. So there you go. Quit a bit before Transworld, and he started smoking again uh, on the way to MHC. <laughs> you got to fail on that one. And I think I'm going to leave it this way for... Uh, for molding. And I don't much, it's not a big deal that this clay is different color. Put that into that crack here, smooth it out. Give it a texture with a brush. And now in the mask, you won't even know that that was a different thing. The mold can't see colors. Yep, darn it, Rob. Hello, Tommy. Glad you're back. Again, I don't necessarily have to do anything down here with clay as far as, uh, you know what? I want to lay this down. I don't need to lay this down. You did the other side just fine without it. But I want to lay it down. Under these years would be a lot easier. So, I'm going to lay it down. <laughs> Now that has a little weight to it. Start a little high and I'll let it sell in. one way or the other. So I'm putting in 
more play. Now you just won't be able to see one side of this pretty much because, hello, Mr. Jimmy. Rob is Ezekiel disappointed in you because you start smoking again. I'm disappointed in me too. I mentioned a mold lock is what I mentioned. Um, imagine plaster that's about to harden into stone and you put your fist into it. And then it hardens around your wrist at this level and all this is plaster. Well, you can't pull that out because this is thicker than this. So if you're going around like the neck of your sculpture, you want to be exactly half so that pulls away freely. If it's more than half and it's grabbing on to that plaster neck inside of there, then you can't have problems. Meaning a mold lock. It is possible to lock the two halves of this mold together so well that uh, it doesn't come apart. At that point, you've made a decorative rock more than a mask mold. Very wobbly. Uh, yeah, it's a plastic table. But Rob is on my first surface. <laughs> so I'm letting Rob stay over there. This is just where everything was. And I'm hoping that it doesn't explode. A little corner here under the ear that would that this doesn't affect the look of the mask but it'd be a very little sharp spot inside of the mold that's prone to breaking off if it breaks off i don't know what it will take with it so i'm making sure it doesn't break off by making sure it doesn't exist the same way i make sure that my children did not keep me from doing what I wanted to do. I did that by not having children. It's not about you can do what you want to do. Now. They do too. They just take all your money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which lets you do what you want to do. Hey, here I sit. That's what I want to do. Arguably the most. I'm trying to find some Vaseline, just so you guys know what's happening. And I know that Josh didn't know where it went, so he put it somewhere weird. And I found it there, and I thought to myself, I should remember where this is. And yet, I did not. Now the table? No, I have some Vaseline. I have some. Now, some. Alexa, add Vaseline to my shopping list. I put Vaseline on your shopping list. I'm Vaselining this plaster mold wall. Everywhere it's plaster, I'm putting Vaseline. Not only am I doing the edge of the mold wall, but I'm also going to wrap it around the mold wall about two inches. Now, forgot something. I forgot pry points. Uh, easier to make them stick before you vaseline. Your pry points.
I'll just like to remove plaster from your hands when your dinner is tacos. I don't. Uh, plaster is calcium. So if you eat some calcium chips along with your meal, it's just that much more wholesome. I don't have children, that's right, but I do have Rob. Very good observation. Hey now. He's never changed my bed. <laughs> I did that by not having children. Alan, 2019. Wisest words I ever read. Well, yes. When I was a young man, I knew what I wanted to do for a living. Thank you, Mr. Jenny, for saying the back half of my mold looks good. Being a fellow mold maker, I appreciate that. So I am putting on pry points. You kind of see this one. And uh, the, the sculpture is here. The mold wall is here. I want to put a pry point on at an angle. I don't want to put it on straight. Because when I hit that with a hammer and a screwdriver, it's going to put pressure right into the mold and maybe chip out this edge. So that is why I put these at an angle so that I make sure that force goes not necessarily right into the edge of the mold. And, uh, Four of these I'll do just fine. With a more intricate mold, I might do more. <coughs> Gotta be big enough for a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, to get down in there and pry those apart. Pry points makes cracking your mold easier. Not the bad kind of mold cracking, the good kind. Because eventually I want to get this apart. Rob, in case I need it, can you scour the shop for a little more Vaseline? Yes, he just wants it. Last time I saw any, it was on that tin. You don't need a lot of Vaseline. I'm not putting on like a quarter inch of Vaseline. Putting a little bit on, spreading it around, making sure that everywhere there's plaster, there's bare plaster, there will be Vaseline. Did you guys see the the, the um, mold locks, the mold keys? Hopefully you did. I may have moved it before I showed them to you. Look at the little half marbles, what they look like now. They were holes, but now they're positives. A little bit of a plaster mess up here. I don't want to worry about rasping it down. I'm just going to cover it with clay. So now I know that ugly plaster that I never really smoothed out isn't going to get in the way of my mold locking up. Huh. Find some? Oh, yeah. Found all of it. Sweet. Uh, yeah, you can start the next batch. I've got one more helmet to put together. Great. That means you got six. That's okay. good. Uh, that's good, Rob. 
we're going to need some more uh, forms trace. More what? Some more uh, forms pieces of the heads. This weekend, I'll cut a bunch more on the laser. Okay. I'm also putting in the live stream. Cool. Well, these these ones should not be. The ones that were laser cut should not be too small. These are not. Okay, great. The latest laser cut ones should be big enough. Uh, now I'm putting, there's some plaster exposed on the eyes of this. The eyes of the bust are actually exposed. So I am um, vaselining those. So that is a cause of mold block. Everything I'm doing is I'm preventing mold blocks and I'm preventing air bubbles. Those are your two big enemies when you're making a mold. Okay. Feel Vaseline. A little more of that crack got exposed. It didn't crack any further, but I didn't see it from the angle it was at before. And a little crack like that, what that's going to do is in the mold, it's going to leave a razor thin edge of plaster. I can just go in and scrape that off with my really not a big deal. To make the base of this, at one time, I had to fill this hollow head with plaster to make it leveled out with uh, clay. I filled it with clay. So I'm just kind of getting that clay out. It's been in there a long time, so it's very dry. I do this for Rob's job security. He loves to sweep. <laughs> Just fills him with joy to come into the shop and be able to sweep for 30 minutes before he can get anything done. Done it, Rob. Yes, absolutely. Number one skill is a haunter. Look in that room. Yeah. Pro haunting is 40% sweeping. Just so you know. <laughs> I do not have any kids. I do not have any kids. Then he knows it. I don't even like kids. You like scaring them? I like scaring kids. Kids make great customers. There we go. Now that's just ugly plaster in there. No more ugly clay. I probably took about four pounds off the weight. All right, so I'm looking and I'm forming a plan, you know, what we do. Okay. I feel good about the plaster I'm about to receive. I'm ready. Have my pry points. I have the back of my mold is done. I'm laying it down so gravity is going to do the work. Let me see if I can adjust you guys and make you a little taller. I don't think I can on this one. Unless I put you on a table. Look, there's Rob in his natural habitat. Okay. I have already pledged to this previously, so I know it has pledge on it. Scott, and I have to make a custom hat for it, and then it can be 
on its way to New York City. Which one? Chamber of Horrors. I have a ship from there. That's right. I remember that. It's a weird angle for you guys. It's rare that you guys are up this high in the ceiling. It's like a selfie. Yeah, that's why you can't see my double chin. <laughs> I heard that's why a lot of people take pictures that way. It's a flattering angle. When I first joined Instagram, I'm like, why do people like taking pictures of their forehead? Because there's a lot of forehead in those pictures. Second half of the mold is actually faster because uh, I don't have to worry about the mold wall. It's already done. You know, it's this plastery bit right here. Knowing my plaster and making sure I use the right mix of plaster at the right time not the biggest thing I have to worry about. Or I'll put that plaster right over here when uh, you're done with it. Oh, it's ready. Okay. Where, where are you going? Where? You'll see a flat spot around by that. Alexa, countdown, one minute. I'm going to let it stand a little longer than one minute, obviously, because it's already been there for a little while. Because, well, you can see my thin hair. I don't really have a bald spot. I've just always had really thin hair. And when it's short, you can see a lot of my head. So I could never, like, tattoo a map on my skull and not have people see it. Really thin hair. But it dries really fast, so that's good. When I had long hair, it was really nice and flowy. But I haven't had long hair in a long time. I had long hair before I had it. maybe I cut it. I met you in 2013. I'm excited to get this half of the mold on. Um, I haven't made a two piece in a while. Nice. It's a skill that you should do. Maybe you don't have to every now and then, just for you know, to maintain your skill set. It's Alexa, stop. All right, let's knock out one more of these things. There's a bucket of water right for round two. Uh, yes, I will open the mold. Uh, I should be able to. It's nine thirty-six. This, I'll probably need one more batch of plaster after this one. Uh, probably exactly the same amount. I'll probably be done with this mold about 10.30. Am I making an alien head? Uh, no, I'm making a, I don't know what they're seeing to ask that. It might be this, I don't know. Um, I'm making a mold for a mask. It's just a zombie face. I have made alien eggs before. If I had to do it now, I would just use a upholstery phone. So much faster and easier. No bubbles, I mean, no bumps. So nice. Because we let it stand. And a solid sifting. Yes, and a solid sifting. 
Uh, so what's important to me now? I'm worried about air bubbles, so I'm filling that mouth. The uh, I had to do this from a drawing, and the drawing that I had, his mouth is closed. But since an actor is going to be in here, and there'll be an icon for a haunted house, they will probably need to breathe and speak a little bit. They'll definitely need to breathe. I'm not entirely sure that they'll need to speak, but I bet breathing is not even an option. Or not breathing is not an option. Now your plaster can do what they call fisheye on top of the um, mold wall because I vaseline it. And if I use crystal clear on the sculpture, it could also fisheye there and not adhere well or whatever. And Pledge doesn't seem to do that. It's a nice barrier without causing that fish eye. And fish eye means it bubbles up. It beats up on it. Are there instances where you can use that to your advantage? It's very rare, but yes. To explain when to people would probably only cause confusion. Okay, now that I have it pretty good in the eyes and the nose and stuff, now I'm working my way to the joint between the mold wall and the sculpture. I'm making sure that those are getting filled in and I don't have air bubbles there. I can't effectively do the other side from this side, so I just have to switch. This other eye is not really well done. And I undercut that eye sculpture a little bit so that there's a rounded edge and you won't see my cut edge. Again, I know this is going to be an icon character for a haunted house. Uh, some people are going to be close to it and use it in marketing. So I want that cut edge to be hidden. Ed Edmonds, by the way, just did a wonderful video on sculpting a zombie mask. Um, where he didn't even use head form, he just kind of measured and, and went. He did a great job on it. Of course, he's at Brick and Edmonds. Um, you want to see me geek out, fanboy, Ed Edmonds, uh, Ricky Dick, Michael Burnett. Those guys are. Uh, you know, industry pillars, you know, there, there's a bunch, but uh, those guys have really been around. They're still doing it. Joe Jensen, that's another one. Jordan. Uh, Jordan, not so much for haunting. Yes, for sculpting. I love Jordan's sculpting. Um, he is, he does sculptures first, mask second. He doesn't care if you can breathe. He doesn't care if you can see. It's going to look awesome. It is going to look good. <laughs> yeah, it's going to look really good. And, and you're going to look so good, you don't care that you can't see or breathe. Andrew Freeman's up there too, as far as sculpting. Yeah, as far as sculpting. But I was talking about like old school. You know, who's my age? He is? Yeah. 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 I mean, we're, we're real close. I will ask him. I, don't, I forget how old he is. Please stand tell. Not like super buddies with them, but I know. I was on two episodes of Making Monsters with distortions. Jordu actually invited me to uh, a unique or creative master. The original master. Yes. Yep. That's, that's, I'm very pleased to see that existence. 
Yeah. I think you just felt that, you know, it's being flooded a little bit with Michael Myers and Jason. And, I'm with him. Yeah. Absolutely with him. And clowns. Well, if the clown's original, then we're still going to be in that group. I haven't seen many original clowns that are masks. Mostly I see individual paints, makeups. No, most of the clown masks you see are technically original. They're not copying a movie character or storybook character. They're copying other clowns. <laughs> Hello, Dave. So right now, I really can't put on too much plaster at once, or it's going to flow over the sides, and that will cause issues with a possible mold block unless I clean it up and make sure it's right apart. So I have to just build up a nice skin and work slowly but surely. If I put it on here at this junction between the mask and the mold wall, and I get it built up thick there without it um, flowing over the edge, then when I put the stuff up here, that plaster will stop it. So this is this you gotta do some engineering here and use your plaster at the right time. I would have less of an issue with that if. I had molded it straight up and down. However, I know I would have bad air bubbles under the ears, possibly under the chin. I'm making sure I get it on top of these mold keys, those are little circles that I carved in the other side. And I keep coming up to the top here, and I'm adding it right on top of the chin, down the lips, and to the nose. Why is that? I want to build up a good thickness, and I want to know how thick I have to get this mold. I got to make sure those areas are covered. What's in danger? Cheekbones. You know, because remember, I built up the edge, and I had a little slump here. Well, all the cheekbones are in that slump, so I got to make sure I have them covered. Now I could have built this all up with clay, you know, really high, and then just let it pour in and use that clay as a dam, but I don't want to waste that much clay. Because that makes a heavy garbage can. And I don't think that this will hurt me doing this. I just have to monitor my time a little better. I've got most of this ear filled in. Feel good about that. The temple now has enough on it. Go to the other side again. Bouncing back and forth so that the plaster is the right thickness for what I'm using it for right now. It is getting thick enough where I can build up another layer. Almost there? No. Probably your very last act, Rob, is mixing me a bench. I said it sucks. Rob only leaves at 10 because sleeping is awesome. <laughs> he still believes in it. I do. It's my favorite hobby. I 
I've actually felt my crud all day. It's probably the best I've felt. Because you're doing something and I'm loving it. Well, I release a lot of it. I'm using UltraCal right now. UltraCal. Big Dog says, well, Rob, you have a nice ringtone. What? Well, they heard the music your phone was playing earlier. Uh, Here's Elvira. Environment. So I'd love to get. I would love to get the sounds from the Monster Bash pinball machine and use them as ringtones and stuff on my phone, like alert notifications. And I'm sure I could. If I had time to dedicate to such things. Zedge. Yeah. It's an uh, app. Uh, yes. Yeah. I had Zen, but I ditched it when my phone was full just to have more memory space. Most of my rings have to be used. We're all This is actually coming along pretty well. So, yeah, I keep coming back up top. Laying down more and it's building up a thickness. And that way I know I've got at least a half inch of plastic. I want everything to have at least a half inch on it. My edges and stuff, that should have a whole inch. Now my plaster is getting thicker, especially on the bottom of the bucket. Then you start mixing? Yeah, my guess. Dredging up the bottom of the bucket, keeping all the plaster active and live. Okay. We're not quite at hand thickness, meaning I put it on my hand, but I am certainly getting thicker. Look at that. See how yeah, I mixed that thick stuff down from the bottom? And now, give me a nice coat everywhere I put it. And those cheekbones could be a problem, so I'm giving them extra care. It's liquid by moving it around a little bit. I'm going to let that flow a little there while I move to the other side. Well, the pinball machine noise is from a very specific game called Monster Bash. It was my favorite pinball game anywhere I could find it. And basically, it is Dracula. The storyline of this pinball machine is Dracula is gathering up the monsters to form a band. And, you know, Wolfman's on drums, and, I mean, it's, there's, there's just some really fun sound bites. Now I reached hand thickness, so I can put it on my hand. I'm monitoring it so it doesn't slide off and over that edge like it wants to. Putting on enough to where I know I've got that good half 
inch, three eighths of an inch on there. We'll do something a little weird. See ya, funny guy. The weird thing that I'm doing is I'm just putting this blob ridge right down the center of the face. Once again, I'm scraping it off the edge of my hand to build up a thickness on those edges. Neither side of my mold do I want to come to a razor edge. That says that my mold was not crafted. That says I just threw it on there. It's not how you get the most strength. I want to bring up that mold up to these levels. Rob, I'm ready for plaster mixing. All right, one second. Okay. Any loose bits? I don't want to get trapped in there. I'm going to worry about your language. We are going to life cast the person. You don't do a life cast in plaster. You do a life cast in alginate or silicone. Most of you do it in silicone nowadays. It costs twice as much, but boy, it's worth it. Man, um, it? We have one at, at Dark Hour that actually shows a tattoo. Yeah, you can see the tattoo on the person wow. through a silicone life cast. Wow. Blew my mind. That just blew my mind. We had to have done a fresh tattoo or something because mine don't rise and raise up like that. Now, this is pretty crumbly up here. That could cause some air bubbles, but I know it's about three quarters of an inch to an inch off the sculpture. An air bubble in the mold right there isn't a big deal. Yeah, an air bubble against the sculpture, that's gonna be a problem. Out my bucket. Tells at the right time. It's easier if you let it set to get out of your bucket. Summerween! Okay. Less than 100 days away. 91 days to Halloween. 
We have not only advent calendars. Like 30 days. You know, we should. We should make them in our free time. Sorry, Catherine. You stealing this. I bet they'd sell. I bet people would buy them. They probably would. I asked you two people. We made Halloween advent calendars. Would you buy them? Call them Halloween countdown calendars. Halloween countdown calendars. We wouldn't want them. We wouldn't want them misappropriate. Not about religious appropriation. I am stealing the chance to know what I do. Steal. I don't know what she marinated that chicken in, but my. She layers flavors the way you layer paint. I think she's better. <laughs> Although I did do a good job on that second grade. It was a realistic paint job. Yeah. I don't do those very much. I liked my graveyard skull. Hmm? The zombie every pan. Hmm. You look good. Then I did you look at that show light? Huh? No, I think so. Did you look at that show light? No, I never. I wasn't over there at the oh. time. I couldn't leave Annabelle's. You know what? I should have told the story. Okay, so the best call I've ever heard on the radio happened this weekend at Dark Hour. Uh, we have a claustrophobia tunnel on Dark Hour. Now I was over at Annabelle, so I couldn't do anything about this. But the call comes over the radio. There was a pack of uh, schoolgirls that got stuck in. The claustrophobia tunnel, they wouldn't leave it. And so that created a you know a backup. There's like 30 or 40 people backed up waiting to go through it. So this call comes over the radio and says, Hey, I've got some people stuck in the claustrophobia tunnel. Can I get a couple of actor trainers or actor managers to go over there and clear it out? Well, one of our actor trainers, uh, Bobby, and I heard this after the fact. Um, goes and he, he runs by everybody's like, excuse me, you know, being his monster and stuff. And then like, the woman at the head of the line goes, you can't go in there, there's kids stuck in there. He turns around, pulls his finger up to his mouth, and goes, Shh, and just backs into the claustrophobia tunnel. Next thing anybody hears is all this screaming and carrying on, and all the girls just come pouring out the other side. <laughs> That's a good story. Best call I've heard spoke this year. I wanted to leave Annabelle's and go help. That, that's how. That's how fun it was. Okay. Now I have two topics. We're about ready. Well, you're about ready. <coughs> I'm about. You're about ready to go. Visualizing how my mold will go. Right over here, please, sir. Huh. Okay. Alexa, countdown, two minutes. I'm gonna grab some gloves. Two minutes, starting now.
This is the good stuff. It is a jack o' melon. No more chop shop. I know the stuff is in stores right now. It's killing me. Me and the wife might try and go at some point. Michael says there's stuff out. At home has their stuff out. And with that, good night, ladies and gentlemen. Did anybody comment on how long countdown count? Someone says they have one on their phone. Whoa! For sure on the Halloween what was for sure. Uh, that you have it on your phone, I should get that. For sure on the countdown calendar. Ninety-one days, no one's counting. I'm gonna suggest that to ancestors. You know what? A combo. We cut it on the laser cutter. All the little doors and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then inside is a little accessory. Yeah. Accessory? Teeth? Yeah. All kinds of things. So it's three, four hundred dollars. You'd have to. You'd have to. All well, right. All that kind of cool stuff, you know. I'll see you tomorrow. Alexa, stop. Thanks, Rob. See you tomorrow. Would you make sure those gates are shut? When I was doing my uh, my YouTube videos that were recorded, I would put little scares in the dead spot sometimes. I got people really good. I'm a jerk. Okay, once again, no real lumps. You know, it's, I'm running my gloves and my hands through. And if a bump touches your fingers, you break it up. But when you let it set like that, you don't get those. And once again, I'm going to take this wet plaster where those are real cracks area, you know, just fitting it in there. I'm making sure that no air is trapped. Not over this whole deal. All those ridges and stuff. Right now, while the plaster is thin, I work on that. Because when it gets on top of here, it actually thickens up faster. It'll kick faster on the sculpture than with the bucket because of the warmth of the plaster under it. Nothing makes plaster kick faster than already kicked plaster. Again, I'm just making sure it's in all those crevices. This batch to really smooth out that last batch. A little gnarly. Now, this will be a nice blender between what's in the bucket and what's going to go on a little bit later and what's already on the piece. Sir, again, I'm taking this wet plaster and I'm really running it everywhere. I'm making sure that this goes in all those nooks and crannies. Well, the shop looks messy because of uh, I'm actually getting a lot of construction done around the shop, so there's things in the wrong place. 
So, uh, and I'm finishing up all of my uh, MHC orders and all the orders that kind of came in post Trans World and MHC. I'm getting all those knocked out. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of work going on. And I should not be molding masks while I'm making Apocalypse helmets. But that's just how it goes. Bloody boo, eh? Normally, I switch over the whole shop with all apocalypse helmets, or it's all you know, sculpting and molding. I got the design season, so but yeah. Austin, this is my life, my friend. This is my life. Um, I got, a, I got a, a mask mold to make, so I'm knocking it out. And it's 10:08 now. I'll probably have this done before 10:30. I had it cracked open shortly after that. It's already thickening on the bottom, so I'm mixing that in with it. Um, this is the sculpt that I did on Sunday. It's like a zombie type, grave digger type character. This is not as thick as I want it to be, so I'm waiting. Once it kicks, it's going to kick. This is kind of a redundant sentence. Hey, Alexander Castle. How is life up there, sir? Hope you're doing well. Alex was our intern at uh, Dark Hour for three weeks, and he helped me in the shop here quite a bit, too. I actually missed your help, Alex. Right now, I'm kind of looking for thin spots. Remember, I made this nice, like, mohawk up, up here on the face. I know that's thick enough. So if I build this as my max point, I don't have to worry about, oh, my God, that I cover the nose and all that stuff. I'm building it up, I'm building it up. This plaster is still a little thin, so I can't keep it on the way I want to. I'll build up, so I gotta make sure I come out flat and go over. Alec, if you say sorry one more freaking time. Alex apologizes more than a Canadian. spreader, which is a preferred tool of mine. Still, 
it's running. I need I need it to have, you know, at least soft peaks before I uh, get to there. It's my life. I'm waiting on plaster to kick. I've done pretty much all that I can with it at this stage. It needs to be a little thicker. When it starts thickening, I'll have a very short window in which to apply it and move on. My fear is that I may not have enough in this batch to finish the mold to my standards. But I actually have a decent thickness on the edges, so maybe I will be able to. We'll see. Just about there on the thickness. So earlier, I was speaking about me not having kids and how that was kind of my plan from the get-go. And the fact that I still remember the public service announcement of, you can go further if you don't go all the way, implying, hey guys, don't have sex, it'll ruin your life. <laughs> I remember that. Maybe that had an impact on me when I was younger. Would a 30 pound bag be enough to make a mold? You'd be cutting it close. Um, I would probably say no. I'd do at least 50%. About at least 50 pounds, not percent. All right. So now I think I'm thick enough to start putting this plaster on. Remember, I already made sure I had enough over the cheeks. I already made sure that I had enough on the nose. Really, I'm filling in this sallow area between this ridge on top of the head. PM'd me already monster bash. That's awesome. I'm excited. So after this season now, okay. This season is finishing up transport orders. 
Um, I will be working on Christmas stuff. Um, I have some new Christmas characters I want to make. Uh, yes, for haunted houses. And uh, so I want to do that. That's my next season that comes up. That way I can kind of sell them during uh, November and December. And then I uh, after that I'll work on my monster museum stuff for a little while. I am running low on plaster, so I'm looking for what is most important. And I think it's kind of flattening out this head. I feel pretty good about all this. You know? I could probably use one more little half batch, but I don't need it. This side a little less than that side. So the sculpture was fairly even, therefore the size of the mold should be fairly even. Knowing what your sculpture looks like and remembering what your sculpture looks like will help you in the molding process. Just like on the back side, I want to add to the front side to make it flat. Blending that in with the rest of the mold pretty good. Just enough. Once again, now I'm smoothing out what I put on here. I should have plenty of strength everywhere that I need it. How is the heat? Uh, today we're 103. So, yeah, not terrible. Good Texas weather. <laughs> I don't have enough plaster to get this as smooth as I want. I could easily do like a beauty coat. Just hit it one more time, you know, to really fill in all those little details and things. Watching this edge now. Draw a little lid off the plaster. That's bad. Sure form rasp. I 
want this mold. It'd be nice. I want this top to be nice and flat. I am heating up pretty good now. Mostly with this wrap, I'm hitting the edge. I don't want any sharpness on that edge. Is that extra clay that I put on around the bottom? There we go. What time tomorrow will I start molding? Probably 7, 7.30. I got to do a one-piece mold tomorrow. Now that I'm out of wet plaster, I can pretty much get my gloves off. I don't like wearing gloves like that. Anybody's like, yes, gloves. Maybe like driving gloves. People like to wear driving gloves. Could I reuse um, that clay? Yes, if I were desperate. All these little chips of plaster are in it now. They just were gonna be, you know. That garbage bag is gonna weigh about 50 pounds. Know that. I already put about 30 pounds of plaster in it. I got about 20 pounds of clay on this sculpture I'm going to put in it. I do tip my garbage men because these get heavy. All right. Stand this puppy up. I should wait for this plaster to cool down. Um, this is still very green. So I should not open it yet. I'm not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep cleaning and that'll open. I'm going to keep cleaning. Past the point where I can scratch into this with a wood tool. That's good to know. What I'm doing is I'm going at a 90 degree angle to the sculpture and I'm flattening it out. I don't want there to be a razor edge here. I've got two mold pads that meet up, and I want them to be, I want them to have a little bit of thickness. Now on the bottom here, where I was the least careful, got a little sharp edge. I 
I don't want anything that is going to cut my hand, catch, and surface area means latex. So the less surface area your mold has, the less latex you use per cast, obviously. your mold with a hammer until you've made a lot of molds. It's hard to tell where plaster will break and it may not be where you predict it unless you're used to the material. And I can't just tell you this, 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 and this. It's not like that. any little sharp protrusions on this mold. And I'm not cleaning this up to add drama. I want to wait until this is cooling down. It's no longer heating up. And I'm at that stage. I'm going to give it a little bit more time. Give a crap about your molds. Hey, big dog. See you later. Thank you, sir. Tomorrow, just skip to the end and watch me break open the mold. It is 1030. Now, what should come off first? The back of the head has a lot less detail. In theory, that should come off first. Have some small flathead screwdrivers here. What I use to open this mold up. I'll just use this little hammer here. That's not enough weight. see a crack start forming along the top. That's what you want. Is that crack forming? That's my edge. Come a little closer. Let's watch again. You see that crack happening right there? That's good. That means it's working. And already, anything over the edge from this side, that crack just runs. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Think about it every night and day. That's why I'm not a singer.
I'm uncovering over here the other one. Now we find out if I made a mold lock or anything like that. It's cracking easy. That's good. That doesn't mean that it's off. When you're prying on your mold, don't pry both pieces the same way. Grab a screwdriver in each hand and go one this way and one that way. That way you're evening out the pressure. When you make a mold properly, it should come off that easy. Hook. There we go. Let me move here. I'll move this piece over here. Both are off. There we go. Head form out of the way. Ugh. Pull it stuffing out. Okay, now my head form is out. Look, it's a me. Now, do all molds open that easy? Ah, uh, no. That's fair. Uh, most of mine do. Do they all clean out that easy? When you use pledge. This half out of the way. I'll bring this half over. Ugh. This is full of plaster chips and it's garbage. I could put it through a whole process of cleaning it and straining it. You reduce it to powder and you reintroduce water and you um, reconstitute it then. I ain't got time for that. Clay's pretty cheap. So if I had started an hour earlier, I could have made Rob pour this up tonight. It's not a super detailed sculpt. It's, it was done from kind of a cartoon image.
Uh, yes, this probably will. Uh, the person who commissioned this mask from me, uh, they paid for me to make them a custom mask. They did not to make pay to make the mold exclusive. So I'm able to pour this up and get, and, and I'll get more uses out of it. And if they, if they do that, then I pass that savings, you know, on to them. A half mask, I'll charge uh, 250 A full head mask, I'll charge 450 I originally thought I was going to do this as a half mask, but time-wise, it works out better as a full head. Like guys, all I'm taking out now is the lips. This mold is pretty much clean. A little bit here on top of the nose, that's out and gone. Pledge is a wonderful thing. I'm gonna put this back together because this mold, this stone is still vulnerable. Uh, they are a space killer. These suck to store. Uh, when you make masks, you're really making, you know, torso-sized rocks. you got to find a home for them. I have shelves and shelves and shelves in the other room of the shop that are just full of masks. So, yeah. But if I don't use something, I kill it. The mold starts uh, deteriorating a little bit. My detail's not as good. I break it up with a hammer, throw it away. Occasionally, I will sell mask molds. All right, so I'm cleaned out. Um, I have a tendon here that has clay in it. That's out. A little bit more on the lip. I'll pressure wash this tomorrow as soon as I start. And then I will, uh, yeah, I'll pressure wash it tomorrow. And then uh, I'll pour it up tomorrow too. I'm going to store it together because right now it's vulnerable. This is stone. It's a natural material. See that? Pretty good seam right here. Nice and tight. I like it. You don't want to see a lot of light through when it's clamped down. It's not clamped yet, but it will be clamped with a mold banding strap. I'm gonna let it sit right here, just like that. So stone will shrink and contract with the weather. Therefore, um, you kinda want to uh, keep them together. Otherwise, one side might contract or expand more than the other. Let me look at a couple more questions. How much do I spend in materials? The materials for this mask now, okay, I, I've spent the bulk of it. Now it's going to take about 10 bucks in latex to pour this up. Uh, it's a double size, maybe maybe twelve to fifteen dollars in latex. Uh, this mold, twenty-five thirty pounds. Um, that's plaster weight and water weight. So there's not a lot of cost in materials now, but I'm gonna throw ten bucks for the hair on it. Uh, I'm gonna make an EVA foam hat for it. So I mean. I'll probably have 30 bucks in it by the end. I would want to sell that. I would want to sell that if I were just selling the one mask and I already had the mold for, it has a base half mask, 
is $75. And then if I add hair to it, that adds 25 bucks. That makes, well, that adds 20 bucks. It makes it $95. And then if I make a custom foam hat for it, that's going to add another 20 bucks and five bucks in materials. So this mask would sell for 75, 85, 95, 105, 100, $120. 120, 125, depending. Yeah, 125, that's how much it is. So that's how much this would be um, all the way finished out, you know. Um, now, if it was only a half mask and I had to mount it on a foam helmet, that's going to bump the price up to 150, but that covers the back of the head. So there's a lot of factors in what and why uh, things cost the way that they do. Out of this mold, I'm going to get 10 beautiful pulls. Beautiful. I'm going to get 10 more pretty good pulls. So that's 20. And then I'm going to get 10 more pulls that uh, aren't the best. You'll be able to tell some detail loss. You know, um, the corners of the mouth won't be as crisp. The mold, the mold erodes every time you pull a copy, just a little bit. Austin, I will tell Shannon that you said hello. It's very good to see you on again, sir. Um, Austin is a friend of mine from years ago who has kind of fell off the radar. I'm so glad to see you on again and to see you uh, and just to talk to you the other day on the phone. It's good to have you back in my life, Austin. I missed you. Um, do I charge less for later pulls? No, I don't. Um, because it's, it's a little bit tough to keep track. But if I pull a mask out and it looks bad, I don't sell it. What I can do now is now I can fill this with latex, then foam fill a copy, pull that out, and have a master. I'll dremel all the scenes off of it, and then I can make a mold off of that master, which just comes out one piece mold. And then from that master mold, I can make as many molds as I want. I think that's all the questions, and it's getting late. So, y'all are awesome. I got this knocked out. I do have one for making half mask. Um, it's of my elf mask. It's how you how you make them. It's you know I I foam it. I pour it up. I foam it. Pull it. Yeah, easy peasy. So making a master making a master copy is what that name is. I appreciate all of you guys for watching. You guys are amazing. Um, thank you for hanging out with me this long. It's amazing that at almost 11 o'clock at night, there's 30 folks who are hanging out and making masks with me. That means a lot. You beat me to it, Line Cook Thor, but go make stuff. Bye.